Hello, vinyl community. This is Randy. Back today with another video. Chris at Tunes from the Man Cave has come up with a 2021 uh, jazz vinyl tag. There are uh, 21 prompts in this tag for us to answer, and I've seen uh, several other people uh, responding to this tag so far, so I figured I would take a stab at it. So, yeah, 21 uh, jazz related questions here. So, uh, the first one is uh, the album that got me into jazz. I'll say this uh, Wynton Marsalis record, Marsalis Standard Time. It's on Columbia Records. This came out in 1987. I got this when it came out. I listened to a little bit of jazz before then. I think this one really helped me get into jazz because, you know, just like the name says, uh, Marsalis Standard Time, there's, you know, s standard jazz tunes on here. So, Caravan, April in Paris, Cherokee. Foggy Day in London Town, Song is You, Autumn Leaves, so, yeah, Marcel Standard Time. Uh, the first jazz album I bought, I think it was probably about 10 years earlier, in 1977, I got this record when it came out, I uh, had never listened to jazz before, I was thinking, but I'd like to start listening to some, so I went to a record store, and the lady there suggested this one, which had just come out in 1977, so this is Charlie Parker. Uh, this is, um, I think this is all of his dial recordings from the mid to late 40s. So, in addition to Charlie Parker, uh, a lot of jazz giants on here. Miles Davis, J.J. Uh, Johnson, who we're hearing in the background right now, blue trombone. Uh, Lucky Thompson plays on here. Uh, piano player with the, probably the best name ever in jazz, Dodo Marmorosa. So, yeah, that would be my, maybe my first one. Uh, a record I own on Blue Note, Sam Rivers, Fuchsia Swing Song, it was probably about 1963, something like that, 62, 63, 64 was when this one came out, Sam Rivers, uh, tenor sax office, um, yeah, record I own on Prestige, uh, I'm not sure, I don't think I really have a real... Uh, first Pressing Prestige. I, I have several OJCs, though. So uh, this uh, Mulligan plays Mulligan. This is Jerry Mulligan, uh, baritone saxophonist, playing his own music. Uh, this came out originally on uh, Prestige. I'm pretty sure it was a 10-inch record when it came out. And um, it actually, I believe, was probably like two 10-inch records that they combined under this 12-inch. So. Mulligan plays Mulligan. Uh, Impulse record. Shabaka and the Ancestors. The name of this record is uh, We Are Seen Here by History. This record just came out in 2020. Shabaka Hutchings is a uh, tenor sax player from England. This is sort of a side project for him, I think. Uh, yeah, he's in the, uh, the sax player for The Comet Is Coming. So. Yeah, that would be uh, Impulse, uh, jazz record on Riverside. I really do have a real one for this one. This is uh, Mundell Lowe, Guitar Moods by Mundell Lowe. Uh, he, obviously a guitar player. Uh, I think this came out in the late 50s, maybe 1957 or 58, something like that. Yeah, Mundell Lowe. Uh, a jazz record on contemporary records. Uh, this is actually a Japanese pressing of a, a record that originally came out on contemporary. It's credited to uh, Barney Kessel, but the name of the record is The Pole Winners. So these were the downbeat pole winners for that year. So yeah, we have Bar uh, Barney Kessel playing guitar, Ray Brown on bass, and <clears throat> Shelly Mann on drums. So. Contemporary. Um, Let's see, a subsidiary or a small jazz label. Pablo Records. Uh, I don't think they're a subsidiary of anybody. I think they're just a smaller, maybe they're really not even that small a label, but Pablo Records. So uh, here's a Milt Jackson uh, record on here with Grady Tate and Ray Brown and Oscar Peterson. Uh, you know, the great thing about these Pablo Records is the black and white covers. They're very easily identifiable by these black and white covers. So. Yeah, Mill Jackson. Um, a record that I own that not too many people know about. Larry Young, 
Lawrence of Newark. Larry Young is a organist. Played on Blue Note for a while, and I guess he played for some other labels after this. He wrote every song on here. This is uh, uh, almost more like a, a big band. There's a lot of people playing on this record, a lot of percussion on this record, too. This is really a fantastic record. The organ sound on here is really different from any other organ that I've ever heard before. I don't know if it's the way it's recorded or the way he was playing it, but yeah. And this is on uh, Perception Records. Perception. This is a reissue from, I think, probably about 20... Well, 1973 is when it came out originally. I think probably about 2017 or 18 for that reissue. Um, let's see. Uh, favorite jazz record that I got in 2020. Got a lot of good re jazz records in 2020, but one that really stands out for me is this uh, Al Cohn and Jimmy Rolls. So, uh, Al Cohn is a, a tenor sax, I think he plays tenor sax, yeah. and uh, Jimmy Rolls is a pianist, well-known accompanist, and I got this record, uh, sort of thinking it would be a, you know, a cool jazz record that I would listen to some, but it's turned out to be one that I've really listened to almost more than anything else. It really reminds me a lot of uh, Mulligan Meets Monk. Mulligan Meets Monk has a bass player and a drummer on it. On this one, it's only these two. But the drummer and the bass player on Mulligan Meets Monk is so quiet, it almost sounds like it's just that too, and it's much the same on here. Also, on both of these records, it's fantastic versions of Sweet and Lovely. So, uh, yeah. Al Cohn, Jimmy Rolls. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, favorite record in a uh, jazz player's discography? I'm going to take Coltrane's sound from his Atlantic years. I go back and forth on Coltrane. I mean, obviously everybody likes, or most people I think like, um, <clears throat> Love Supreme, Crescent is another one of my favorites. But, um, you know, the more I listen to it, I, I really keep going back to the prestige years for Coltrane. And uh, his Atlantic years were great, too. So my favorite things, fantastic albums. So Coltrane's sound I'll pick for my favorite out of his discography, Central Park West, Equinox, or two of the big songs on that one. Uh, let's see now. Uh, favorite book? Uh, oh, in a brick and mortar store. Yeah, I just got this one last year. This actually came out in 2019, but I just got it in 2020. This is Joe Lovano. Name of the record is Trio Tapestry. There's just three people playing on this. Marilyn Chris Bell plays. Uh, piano and uh, Carmen Castaldi plays drums and percussion. This is a fantastic record. Really sounds great. I use this for background music in one of my videos, and uh, I think it got more comments than any other record I use for background music all year. And uh, yeah, they have a new album coming out. Uh, I think it's already out in Europe, and it's going to be here in the United States in the next month or so. And they're, I think they're calling it a band now, Trio Tapestry. And then that record uh, has a name. Uh, called Garden of Expression. That's going to be available soon. So yeah, we're really looking forward to that one. A uh, record that I bought online this year. <clears throat> Got a lot of records online. Uh, here's a really good one though. Jazz for Hi-Fi Lovers. So uh, this is a true high fidelity record. This is on Modern Harmonic. This is a reissue. So uh, I think this is one of those records that they made in the 50s to help people uh, you know, demonstrate their stereo systems but it's really great music too really like it a lot so uh yeah here's the track listing jazz jazz for hi-fi lovers uh a record that a friend got for me or that was gifted to me some vclt that i received from william now bradley dexter gordon's album one flight up Brad actually just uh, reviewed this uh, recently in the Blue Note 400, uh, 4, 4000 series, and uh, uh, it caused me to get it back out and start listening to it again, and it really is a fantastic album, and uh, yeah, uh, this is a, uh, this is a uh, Blue Note 75 reissue, sounds fantastic, it's, this album is about to be reissued as part of the Blue Note 80 series, I think, but uh, I'm not going to be getting it again because I, I don't need to, that one sounds great. Um, let's see, a jazz box set. Uh, I have this uh, Miles Davis box. 
this is the complete prestige 10 inch LP collection so that's a fantastic box I won't I won't pull them all out but um, it's just really cool because it has like the original the original covers that were used back in the 50s on these so uh, of course I'm a big Miles Davis fan so that's a great box set to have uh, 10 inch or 7 inch here is um, uh, Stan Getz and Joao Gilber Gilberto uh, doing uh, The Girl from Ipanema. That is on Verve Records. Well, so you can see the yeah, Verve Records for that one. Girl from Ipanema. Jazz classic. Uh, the most recent jazz score. I think the most recent jazz record I got came through the mail uh, is this Teddy Edwards Quartet, Out of This World. Uh, this is most recent as far as, this is the most recent one I got. This is not a recent jazz record. This is from the uh, late, I think it's from 1978 was when this was recorded. So, Teddy Edwards on tenor sax, Kenny Drew on piano, Jesper Lungard on bass, and Billy Hart on drums. Really beautiful cover there. It's a wonderful version of Out of This World. On this record, so Teddy Edwards Quartet. Um, let's see, uh, jazz record I hope to find in 2021. Um, gosh, you know I just have to think about that some. Uh, there's nothing really in particular that I'm looking for. Just whatever pops up that looks good to me. So uh, uh, yeah, I mean I am looking for that uh, Trio Tapestry record, but. Uh, yeah, so maybe that would be one for 2021 that I'm looking forward to. Um, a jazz record, uh, you know, I would like to upgrade. Definitely this uh, Breaking Point record by Freddie Hubbard. This was a Blue Note 75, which really did have major issues. It's uh, it's playable, but there's just so much noise and stuff on it. And for some reason, the noise on these newer ones is just much more irritating than the surface noise you hear on a real truly old record that's come by that noise honestly um, so yeah if they reissue this one I, I would because it's a great record I mean I like it um, great band out here James Spaulding on alto sax and flute Ronnie Matthews on piano Eddie Kahn on bass Joe Chambers on drums uh, but yeah this one is just almost unplayable it's unfortunate um, free, jazz, free jazz record Joe McPhee Nation Time. This is on Superior Viaduct. I think this one came out in 1971. And a Desert Island jazz record. Um, <laughs> you know, that's tough. I'm going to say Some Name My Prince Will Come. Yep. Miles Davis, you know, probably my favorite jazz artist. Uh, Features John Coltrane on one song, just Someday My Prince Will Come. Otherwise, it has Hank Mobley playing sax on it with Wayne Kelly on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, Jimmy Cobb on drums. So, Someday My Prince Will Come. Yeah. So, that's it. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for coming up with the tag, Chris. That was fun. I, uh, I enjoyed that. And uh, I'm going to leave a link to Chris's uh, video announcing the tag. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think. I'd be interested to know what you think about these records, and I uh, hope everybody's doing well out there. And uh, Thanks very much for watching.